Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our um, September OD talk. Um, I had all sorts of plans in my head about how to introduce how we got to this topic and all those thoughts are now jambled after this informal conversation that happened just now because it's also awakened new stuff in my head. Um, but really, um, I think we, we had started for me, where, where I started realizing that, that there's probably a lot of work to be done is through the work that we've been doing in leadership development, management development, uh, our program Leaders Shift especially, which we took online in 2020 and I've been facilitating quite a few sessions. And um, the team leaders in, in, in those programs struggle with performance management. They, they, they might be a system that they're not uh, comfortable with, but it's also, um, for them to, to have feedback conversations, for example, is difficult. Even giving positive feedback is difficult. Um, just having the, Craig was just talking about emotional intelligence, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and um, we're also working on um, a, one of our clients with a culture survey and the, the outcomes of that survey, the area that scored the lowest was anything to do with performance management. And as we know, um, that impacts the employee experience, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I do think a lot of it does come down on, on the managers to, to manage the, whatever the system is. But anyway, um, we're gonna have enough time to have interesting conversations around that. So I'm not gonna um, go on about my opinion. I think to start with, I'm gonna put us into some breakaway rooms and um, We'd like for you to just have a chat around what is the state of performance management in South Africa? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What's happening in your organization? If you're a consultant, what are you hearing from your, from your clients? And see where the conversation goes. And then after that, we'll take some feedback from the different rooms. And um, then Craig has a, has a very interesting presentation for us. And there will be some more conversation after the presentation. And we will finish at half past 10. Um, so, uh, have you tried to put the client through to the managerial line? <laughs> um, and there's nobody answering there either. Let me just mute, sorry. <laughs> yeah, happy to answer on, 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 on your behalf though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna create the breakout rooms quickly. Start thinking about what you'd like to chat about in your rooms. It should start in about 30 seconds. Hi, Janet. Hi, Dan. Hi, Beatrice. Okay, I'm going to do um, four rooms for now. I just want to say quickly, because I always forget, we are live tweeting. Louise, you should like that. Um, Janine is on the call. Her, her name on Zoom is tweet us at Worlds V. Um, so if you'd like to take part in that conversation, please feel free. Okay, the first room, Christina, Colette, Natalie, Peter, and Amisha joined a little bit later. What did you guys talk about? Okay, so I'll, I'll give the feedback. Um, so very quickly, um, I'll start with Amisha's feedback. So she's, she's going through a huge change in her company. So the biggest challenge is obviously determining metrics um, that you know, they need to performance manage their staff. We spoke about weekly 10, which is a project that Natalie is implementing. They're looking at better ways to effectively manage their performance management. Um, not the traditional three meetings a, a year, um, sort of regular check-ins. Um, I think it's 10 minutes a week where you spend time with your, your direct employees, but it builds up to those formal meetings. So there's no surprises. Uh, we spoke briefly about the challenges in terms of having managers that are capable um, to have performance management uh, conversations. And of course, we all agreed that um, for a performance management system to work in terms of implementation, um, you know, all parties need to be on board. You need to create the buy-in, make sure the people responsible for having those conversations and processes um, are empowered to do so. I think, yeah, I think that's the crux of what we, we discussed. If there's anything else, ladies, you'll, you'll correct me there. Um, yeah. That's it from room one. Thanks, Peter. Anybody else wants to join anything from that room? Ugh, add I anything? Think, I think what we also emphasized was the fact that 
the biggest failure of performance management is not the parties not having an understanding of what is measured. So from the initial start, the employee needs to know what are they measured on. Mm. And that discussion needs to take place and they need to agree to it. So that when you get to the uh, appraisal phase, it's not a surprise when I say you didn't perform. And constant feedback is key in performance management for it to be successful. Um, you can't have a once-off discussion when you talk about performance management. It should be on a continuous basis, you need to give each other feedback. Hmm. Yeah, very true. Thank you, Christina. Okay, let's hear from room two, Barbara, Beatrice, Ibrahim, and Louise. <laughs> I don't know whether, Ibrahim, Ibrahim, I think you have the most wisdom in that room. Yes, that's interesting. You're on the spot. It's going to be interesting. You've Thank been you. voluntold, so <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Ibrahim. No stress, all good. So yeah, we've uh, brief chats around the introduction from the team itself, and obviously how the how we see that the maybe the the approach to performance management, uh, what is, what was, and maybe to re look in the the vision or actually the vision, but how we should address performance management going forward. So obviously, times have changed, people have changed, uh, the new working staff, so see that the graduates that's coming now into, into the corporate world are looking at things very differently and the expectations uh, to be met. And obviously when they achieve such expectations is quite rewarding and, and, and a powerful motivation as well. Ooh, let me sum it up there. So I'll, I'll leave the forum open to the other ladies if they wish to put additional input. Anything you want to add, Barbara, Beatrice, Louise? I think Barbara had an interesting perspective on um, on what younger people are wanting joining organizations these days, and they're wanting something different. They're wanting to be able to have different types of conversations. Um, they want to be engaging in a different kind of way uh, to the traditional way in which kind of performance reviews, feedback, et cetera, has been taking place in organizations. And uh, Barbara also shared with us her focus in terms of some of the consulting she does, her triple R, recruit results retain, which I think is a, quite a catchy thing. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <clears throat> We've, we've now got triple R and weekly 10. Nice ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Beatrice, room three, Craig, Jabu, Janet, Richard, Toinette. What did you guys talk about? Um, I, one of the ladies will pick that up because I'm going to be talking a bit just now. So you're going to get tired of my voice. What about Jabu? I thought you, you were our scriber, <laughs> but it's okay. We, we had very interesting uh, conversation and uh, I loved what uh, Tonette spoke about in terms of, you know, the impact of COVID. We, we, we looked into empathy and we emphasized on the emotional intelligence um, of, of the leaders in, in managing performance. Uh, and now things are, are, are changing. And um, Janet spoke about, you know, empathy doesn't mean uh, being a softie. Um, it, it, it means still being able to hold people accountable for, for their performance. However, it's all about enablement, enabling people to perform and not necessarily controlling performance. Um, I hope I'm covering that quite well. And um, I, I think the, the key thing was it's important to really contract at the beginning and understand the objectives uh, being set from the beginning, because then if they are fuzzy from the beginning, it becomes very difficult to have the conversation or the kind of conversations of non-delivery. And uh, the other thing that came up was really to say, we need to engage and not control, you know, performance. 
and um, the tools are not meant to control them and to enable. And that's so true. Um, I mean, in the space that I find myself in where I do workforce management as well, people are tired of being controlled um, and being spied on. They want to make sure that we are enabling them and they can have the freedom to do as they will. And also what came to play is the hybrid work where people are now, I mean, it's a hybrid working environment. And you start looking at really the results of are people performing better when they are home versus when they are when they are in the office? And there's different dynamics that come into play. That if you are in the office, there's the engagements and the chit chats that you need to have, the coffee chats that people have, um, and they're walking into meetings versus when you're working from home. Um, that 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 that's less of it because um, everything is within a confined space. And yeah. Um, maybe the other thing I would add, because I know there's other teams as well, is what we've seen is when when we collaborate quite well in the office, it actually brings out the best of the people. Um, and we've seen more of the young ones actually loving going to the office because they get time to connect. Mm. Yeah. I can add. I, I can add a little to that. Um, uh, Craig, when we got into our room, you asked a question. And that was why why is performance management so crap um and you you mentioned we've been uh, uh, managing performance since you know the the for thousands of years and i it got me thinking uh, and uh, our whole discussion in our group uh, uh, pointed it out in different ways is it's crap because it was managed in a very specific way back uh back when they were building the pyramids that, that that relationship was not a fair relationship and i think it has been fairly unfair up until recently so we had very little time where we're actually considering the whole person in in what performance management is that's the thin slice right at the top the rest has all been an unfair uh relationship and that's why we so crap at it we we've we have not had the time we've not been looking at it from the right perspective anyway there's my two cents thanks richard i saw ibrahim you put up your hand do you want to add something yes sorry i i just what jabu mentioned about the, those chat chats and i just want to add some comment on that it's those coffee chats those five minute smoke break chats were so powerful that you could have them whenever you wanted to and there was a quick walk to let's have a chat let's have a smoke let's deal with this issue and get it on and going the problem is that now you have to book a minimum 15 minutes or a 30 minute session in someone's calendar to see the availability to have a smoke <coughs> smoke break chat and the thing is to find that time in someone's diary it's a nightmare and before you could have like five people around a coffee station you dealt with an issue and you go on so the hybrid has its benefits and there's some challenges with it as well. That's thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Peter. There we go. Yeah, I was gonna add there was a wonderful article, I think it was Harvard Business Review, that said that a number of the, the new generation of employees worry a lot about the absence of those um, connect sessions and the impact it has on their career progression. Um, because like everyone said, you know, if, if your boss is a smoke and maybe I'll be biased here, um, those sort of five minute chats uh, mean so much as opposed to finding 15 minutes um, uh, of time in someone's diary. So I'll share that article with, with the group once I can quickly source it. But it's an actual genuine concern. A hybrid is great, but those um, unscheduled brief, let's have a coffee, etc. Um, is something that, you know, employees, especially our younger generation worry about. Um, in terms of their career progression, not being seen or heard by people of, of, of influence in the organization. Um, who? Janet, you raised your hand. Yeah, so just uh, one sort of other thought. I think the bottom line is that the way performance management has, has been in the past treats people like children that expects them to show up like adults. Uh, to what Louise was saying earlier. And I think the challenge 
so if you're saying where is performance management now? We're very clear on what hasn't worked. I don't know that we have clarified what will work in its place. Yeah. And I think that's a very nice segue to, um, to hand over to Craig. Thanks, Janet. Craig, you should have um, access to sh screen sharing. There we go. And you're still on mute, Craig. Do you have access to the presentation in full screen? Yes. Great. So this is this has been wonderful. Um, about a month ago, I reached out to Liesl and I put my hand up and said, I want to talk about performance management, so I need some people to talk about it with. And she agreed to today. Um, and this is very much in the problem space. So I'm not talking solutions today, although um, I am curious to know from Liesl and the, and the colleagues on the call if we should have a follow-up then that talks about the solution. A lot of this was coming from my own experience where I've been trying to implement performance, decent performance management programs, and it just never seemed to get the result that I'd uh, hoped for. So I was, uh, I was taking a, a kind of a closer look. Um, this is, of course, in the context of a country, South Africa. Stats South Africa says we, we shared 119,000 jobs in the second quarter of this year. Um, and that's a performance problem. You know, if the, if the organization is performing well, we normally retain jobs and grow. And uh, when we're shedding jobs uh, in a country like South Africa, that's pretty sad. Um, Anyway, I found, I found this survey and I thought I'd just share the results with you and see what conversation we ended up having. And uh, that's where I am now. I'm going to, Lisa, I'm going to minimize the um, videos so that I can just get access to my screen. So I can't see you anymore. Um, please uh, do more than wave at me if you need me. I will do. Okay. <laughs> so let's start out with I know, I know it might be boring, but let's look at what is performance um, management. So person who I'm sure you're all falling in love with, and if you haven't, you, you know, you probably are about to, because um, he's just, he's so snappy and like, you know, popular and foxy. Um, and he, he talks about performance management is one of the most fundamental practices in HR and management. Okay, so good. It's definitely been around for a long time and it's going to be around for a while. It, what it should be is a process for setting goals. And a lot of the people in the check-in said that's not as easy as it sounds. Evaluating performance against the goals, coaching that came up in our check-in and career development. It should also result in increases in individual and organizational performance, as well as information used to decide on salaries, bonuses and other rewards. This is quite an important process, you know. Um, another source is this uh, book that I'm working my way through at the moment, I'm about halfway, um, Humans at Work, The Art and Practice of Creating the Hybrid Workplace, which lots of books coming out at the moment around hybrid workplace. And of course, there's a section on performance management in this book. Um, so they've got this lovely reference, the organizational highway that connects the workforce with work, often described as the Swiss army knife of workforce management. <laughs> you know, Jabalili has got this role of workforce management, the Swiss army knife of workforce management, because on the Swiss army knife is goal setting, assessments, employee development, rewards, careers, a lot of the employee life cycle, um, you know, so again, an important process. But what uh, Tavis and Lepusha point out is the crescendo of employee discontent with this legacy process became louder as the work itself became more distributed, project-based and collaborative. It's kind of like you could endure the performance management process while we were all based and co-located in, in offices, but somehow the brokenness of the whole process has become a bit clearer um, 
during the pandemic. So the, the uh, survey was run by a, a company that produces software for um, for performance management, uh, a company called 15.5. Some of you may have heard of them, may not. Um, it doesn't matter so much uh, who they are. I think that the, the survey was interesting. And in, before you ask, I'm not going to offer to email you the um, survey, uh, the report. I, you, you can get access to the presentation from Diesel. But I think to be fair to 15.5, they did this as a marketing exercise. So go to their website uh, and you it's not hard to get the report. You just uh, have to give them your email address and your name um, and then they'll send it to you. But I think that's, that's fair play to them. So go and have a look at their website. Their methodology, um, they uh, approached 500 HR managers. 1,000 line managers and 1,000 individual contributors. And you'll see very much um, that they're trying to understand the disconnect between the way these three uh, personas experience performance management. And I thought there was quite, it's an interesting approach, of course, because it, it makes you realize that there's not one view of how the performance management process works. And they talk about five disconnects and I'm going to go through those five disconnects fairly quickly um, and, uh, and, and see what they, what they found. First disconnect is lack of consensus on what is the performance review process. The second is the, the difference between how good managers are, are or think they are and how good employees feel the managers are. Uh, this question around goals and goal setting, um, there's some surprising data there actually would surprise me. Uh, and then um, is the process accurate and fair? And uh, does the process do what it's supposed to do? Does it achieve a result? So gap one in terms of what is happening, does your organization have a formal review process? 93% of HR leaders surveyed said, yes, we do. And very 92% of managers, 77% of individual contributors. So even at that level, there are people who work in organizations who just don't know that there is actually a formal process. Can employees give feedback on it? You know, when you say 64%, yes, you've got 36% uh, of employees saying, no, we're not even, we're not allowed to give feedback on that. Managers, 92% say employees can give feedback. So you've got the sense that employees feel maybe that they're trapped in a kind of a process that they can't really control. How often do managers talk to their direct reports about the career goals or, or aspirations? So this is a really important piece of performance management to have this conversation to say, where do you want to go? Where do you, what do you want to do? Um, the HR managers and uh, HR leaders and managers all think that happens quite a lot. Uh, more than a quarter of the individual contributors say that doesn't happen. Uh, and then is the, pro, is the program growth and development focused? Again, HR and line managers say, of course it is, predominantly. Almost half of individual contributors say, no, it's not. You know, it's not about growth and development. And you've got a sense of that when I think Janet and Jabalila, or Jabalila was pointing out that a lot of people think that performance management is what you do just before you fire someone. And that may be that, ex that experience. So gap number two, are you good at this? Are you good at the performance management process? Well, the HR leaders and the managers themselves think they're good at it, but, but half of the uh, individual contributors, half the employees say, no, they're not really. They're just not great at it. Um, does the process, this really was shocking, does the process improve the manager's subordinate relationship? Uh, for me, this would be a huge red flag. You know, HR leaders and managers think it does, but clearly they've got all the power in this relationship. More than 50% of individual contributors say no. And you know, the negative answer to this question is, this process either has no effect on our relationship or it makes it worse, you know. So you've got a process playing out inside your business that is pushing 
at worst is pushing these the the manager subordinate apart um are you inspired are the direct reports inspired to improve after a performance management conversation and this is across a thousand managers and a thousand individual contributors managers think yep you know we were really inspirational i've inspired them to improve almost half the individual contributors say nope that, that, that is not an outcome. So what about this goal setting thing? Here's a surprise for me was, uh, almost everybody understands the company goals. So certainly across this survey, they know what the company is trying to achieve and they understand the difference between you know, good performance, average and bad performance. That's across the board. Even the individual contributors, I understand that. Enough of them, 77%. Um, but do the managers have the skills and the tools needed to help the employees meet their goals? HR leaders and managers say, yes, we do. But the individual contributors say not so much. Now, I know that Louise and Janet particularly um, and uh, uh, and uh, Antoinette in our group was saying, we're kind of challenging the, the 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 need for the managers to have all the answers, and there should be some pressure on the on the employees to 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 figure this out, you know. Um, but still, a lot of the individual contributors are saying, my well, managers don't have uh, the tools and the skills to help me. How accurate and fair is the process? <laughs> you know. At least there's a bit of realism from the managers here. Does the process provide an accurate representation of employee performance? HR is convinced that their process does, 75%, which isn't 100. 66% of managers sort of saying, well, the managers are cautious. More than half of individual contributors say, this does not give you a, a, a fair picture of my performance. And is the process fair and equitable? Again, a big discrepancy between the perception of the individual contributors and the managers. Finally, outcomes. This is the last slide. Does the process improve employee performance? More than half of the individual contributors say, no, it does not. Doesn't make, it doesn't make anything better. Um, does it improve employee engagement? Individual contributors say, no. And does the process improve employee satisfaction? Very high percentage of people say no, it does not. And you know, before I wrap up, uh, a quick story that doesn't come from the survey, but was brought up uh, during the survey for me. Um, my son uh, is still at school, my youngest, and he talked about a thing at school called a weekly report. He was concerned that somebody he's mentoring in the junior grades has been put on a weekly report. And I remembered being on a similar thing when I was at school a long time ago, where um, the weekly report I was on was called the disciplinary report. You got a, and it was an attempt to manage the performance of me as a student, a schoolboy. And the way to manage my performance was to go around to all of my teachers. And, and the question was, has this employee, uh, has this uh, student um, performed well? And the teacher just had to answer yes or no. I had to take that form home to my parents. They had to sign it off. And then I had to report to the office on a Friday at school with this form signed by the teachers and signed by my parents with these yeses and nos. And the consequences, there were consequences, um, was I would get two lashes of a, of a wooden cane for every no, up to a maximum of six lashes. And the question was, did that improve my performance? Did it improve my engagement? And did it improve my student satisfaction? And the answer was, heck no. I hated those teachers who, who marked me down, literally hated them. And I, I did everything I could not to uh, uh, engage with their subjects. And here I find, a school, a really good school, uh, running pretty much the same process where the only difference on the outcome is detention. You get points that lead to detention. And I wondered whether that was working at the school to improve student performance, engagement and satisfaction. Um, and, and now we hear the stories, you know, coming out of our organizations about how these performance management processes are 
you know, maybe broken at such a fundamental level that we can't see it. And so I must say, I really loved Richard's insight that maybe this thing's been broken since the beginning and it's something about the relationship. So that's the data from a survey or a brief, very brief presentation. I'm assuming for most of you, that was um, something you knew, uh, but I'm gonna hand the baton back now to, um, to you, Liesl, to decide how we wanna debrief that. You know, What do you think? Do we need to go into smaller breakout rooms to just have a quick chat and then come back? Because there's quite a lot of us. Or uh, how do you want to handle it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I think breakouts would work nicely, as you said, to to just debrief. Um, I just wanted to comment. You said you you suspect most of us have known what the research has shown, but I'm thinking. Um, most of us has suspected and the research has proved <laughs> that um, or, or confirmed our suspicions. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to put you back into breakout rooms um, and give it about uh, another 15 minutes to, to chat and that'll give us another 20 to come back into the main room and have a conversation. Um, and just chat about what did you see? Um, Craig, is there a specific question? What was your, your last slide said? Um, we, we're not jumping to solution yet, are we? I, I'll leave that up to everybody. I mean, we're all adults. Figure out what, what you want to talk about when you get into the breakout room. Um, and that, that's my advice. You know, mm -hmm. Stay in the problem space if you possibly can. But maybe, maybe you want to go to solution. I don't know. Okay. I'm not your dad. <laughs> Okay, opening the breakout rooms and you got 15 minutes, I'll send you notifications. Okay, let's get some feedback and see where this conversation went when you went into your rooms. Uh, room one had Amisha, Jabu and Peter. Hey, me and this mute button, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, I, I was with Jabu and Amisha and ladies, please feel free to jump in. Um, so we discussed, um, Amisha mentioned that, you know, we have to have an individualistic approach um, to how we, we do performance appraisals or, or management. Um, definitely focusing on the, the strengths and variables that impact the performance of an individual or team. Um, so again, it doesn't come across as, as something as a clinical process, but obviously taking into account any challenges they faced. Uh, Jabu mentioned that it definitely starts with self. If you are in a managing position, managing people that you've got to naturally display and um, model the behavior you want to see through your teams. And obviously their KPIs should be again linked to strategic objectives. Um, definitely under, we also spoke briefly about um, the tendency for organizations to see a fantastic system working, for example, at Harvard, and then just, you know, replicating as opposed to understanding, does it work for us? It might be a really great thing for Harvard PTY Limited, but does it work for SA Inc? Um, and understanding before going into turning your performance management system on its head is whatever you're trying to implement or replicate working for your organization it's and it's you know strategic intent around people management um yeah i shared a, a short story about you know a company i used to work with where we had to start performance managing from a system from scratch and, and sometimes keeping it basic is also um a, a great solution often we were pressured i think in this you know COVID 2.0 or post COVID, where everything has to be big bright lights and sometimes it's 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 just keeping it basic, like, okay, let's start with the most basic of performance metrics and et cetera, um, and build on that. And that obviously talks to the point about before replicating, understanding if that solution works for your organization and of course, what you're trying to achieve. Okay, I think that's it, ladies, anything else? Okay, I think we're good. Okay, now I can mute. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I see Jabu's left. Um, room two, Barbara, Ibrahim, and Richard. What did you guys talk about? I think Ibrahim presented that so well last time. Ibrahim, don't mind. I 
felt that coming on, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 chatted uh, briefly around the, uh, the the slides that uh, Craig had presented through to us, and like says, I've recently uh, <coughs> uh, a new line manager, so to say, and where we I think most corporates talking now pre-COVID is that we used to do KPIs either annually or biannually and stuff. Things have changed. Certain things still remain the same, but I think we as, uh, how can I refer to them as middle managers, I've basically engaged in having monthly discussions with my team itself to see where we are at the moment, where are we going, are we focusing, can we reach our short-term goals and so forth. And if that's not happening, let's refocus, let's readjust and let's work with that. Mm. Change is happening. Uh, the hybrid work system, there's, there's definitely uh, positives, there's negatives in there as well. It's brought about a lot of change in the environment as well. Uh, the, the, the shaking of the tree fresh set of, of eyes and the, the dynamics of what's playing at the moment is uh, the hybrids having the actions with uh, reaching the objectives and goals. And then obviously a point of creating the open mindedness with senior management, uh, finding different views and angles and stuff. Thanks, Ibrahim. We you you were breaking up a little bit, but I think we got the gist of what you're saying. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks, and we'll we'll open up to questions uh, in a bit. Room three, uh, Craig, Lawrence, and you did have I think a Christina with you at some point. Yeah, we did. Um, I think you know. In general, Christi because I had just presented, um, Lawrence and Christina did um, quite a lot of sense making, but the starting point seemed to be that the data is correct. There was this just this very sad feeling of, you know, we're creating programs that just aren't working or we're creating programs that are not being enjoyed by our teams. Um, and that was, um, you know, yeah, a realization. I think as Christina put it, she just said, I think we're kidding ourselves as HR that, that everything's okay because it's probably not. Um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll give the ball over to Lawrence, if you don't mind taking it, Lawrence, to just talk about, you know, where that conversation went. I Sorry, I'm going to try, but my bandwidth is pretty low on this side, so... Yeah, I, I'm not going to say too much about it, not repeating everything, but um, ultimately I think it's it's how it's applied. Um, and, and just one of the comments, I, I'm not sure it was, it was later on, you know, to take off the shelf package and it's a, it's a best practice, practice package, that's that's not the solution. But um, essentially, uh, it's, it's for me, it's the leadership, um, how it's applied. And I also said that I think the, the, the perceptions about performance management, if, if I, I think of the question I've asked, if uh, how's it going with you, then um, I think it's going worse with me than with you, or is, I think it's going better with you than with me. So that perception, I think the same question was asked to, to the line managers and say, okay, how do you, did you experience your performance management process with your leaders, your senior leaders or vice presidents or whatever that might be, they might also have a bit more negative um, responses or less op or le less positive responses than what they had. Um, ultimately, I think it's also what I said is that uh, performance management is all, all, always or most of the time, it's, it's a combination of it or it's, it's, it's confluent with, um, with uh, your bonus or incentive, annual incentives, it's with performance increases or performance management. And ultimately, it becomes such a such a vague uh, area that it's out of your control. Um, um, and as I said, you know, after your performance rating, your manager might decide it's a good rating. And that then is handed over to a so-called moderation team. And the moderation team forces you into a bell curve. And you might have done exceptionally well. And um, then they just say, well, pff, sorry for you, but this year you fall in the average or below average category and you're penalized in that way. But you don't have 
actually really recourse to that except maybe to 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 go the the IR route which is not always good within the company if you want to stay with the company and um yeah i think that's that's i'm not going to say too much about more more about it but uh, greg you're welcome sorry if, oh, sorry uh, if you want to add something no i think uh, thank you lawrence and thanks for sharing in the group thank you um Beatrice and Janet, you were in room four. I'll jump in quickly, Beatrice. I've had a few notes and feel free to add. Um, so I think, first of all, we need to change the ethos and the language. So, sorry, these were just very concrete suggestions. Secondly, I think expectations have got to be clearly set. And Beatrice talked very specifically about how important it is that those are effectively interpreted. Um, and going along with that, how are things going to be monitored? And one of the biggest challenges is it's very easy to monitor in the audit world. It is not as easy to monitor and, and, and come up with metrics in the unordered world. Um, the third point was really around understanding constraints and being realistic. Uh, honestly, everybody is so overworked right now. Um, the expectations are not fair, bottom line. Um, it's really critical that great performance is made rewarding, that it is noticed, um, because, and, and this relates to engagement. So why would people want to show up and do a really great job? Um, and how do we notice that? How do we respond to it? How do we make it something that's rewarding? Because the bottom line is, we only have two mechanisms. We have money that we use, and we use What's his name? Promotion. Well, the pyramid looks like this. Not everybody can be promoted. So that's really problematic. We have to become more creative in how we make work rewarding. And engagement is key to that. Um, and there are two more points. The one is really about leadership. So the fundamental thing is people don't know how to lead. And they need to be, there needs to be a daily working with people to improve their performance. Um, and the last point, which we didn't talk about, was pushback needs to be allowed. <laughs> there needs to be space where people can go, you know what, your expectations are unrealistic, or here's the constraint, or whatever it may be. Um, if that doesn't happen, you can kiss the process goodbye. Beatrice, what did I miss? <laughs> uh, I think that was a pretty good summary there. Uh, Janet, thanks very much. Yeah. I don't think I have anything to add. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a, 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 a conversation happening in the chat that I'd like to bring into the room, but um, just want to give Louise and Natalie a chance to respond. Louise and Natalie, you were supposed to be joined by Mamile, but she keeps dropping off and dropping back in. So unfortunately, because she had an interesting story that she eventually shared with us in the in the room, the, the the, the different cultures that she has worked in was like fascinating. But anyway. So I'm really conscious of the fact that we've only got seven minutes to go and I'd love to hear some closing thoughts from Craig. But um, Natalie, did you want to say something from about that program that you're looking at? You're on mute. Hmm. Sorry. I was going to say, I'm going to hand it over to you. I think you you can speak on our behalf. And um, yeah, I think the cultural side, just the baggage that we spoke about, probably ties in a bit there. So it might be useful to mention that. Yeah, I just thank you, Natalie. I was just um, very, I, I've, I've recently really seen how in South Africa we have an additional piece to this, which is the, so as we've got the parent-child dynamic and then we have privileged and often white and certain unexperienced people. And then we have people who are confronted with all of the history around black and white in this country every time there's a conversation like a performance management conversation. And I think it's time for us to call, call that and work with that and, and bring awareness to that to, to all of us, you know, to the men and the women and the, because there's a there's also a big gender issue. Peter Block said. If you you in South Africa are going to deal with your race issues way before you're going to deal with your gender issues, and so performance management happens in that context. It's the it's the water we swim in in this country specifically, which I think makes it even more challenging. And um and 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 there's 
I mean, I haven't seen miracles happen when you start to actually have those conversations with groups of people. So I'm so excited about the possibility here. But let me stop there because I want to hear Craig's final thoughts. And Craig, this is a hopefully conversation one of a series. Yeah, um, so let me try and move to some sort of conclusion of today, um, bearing in mind that I was in the problem space and I was looking, this is a favorite line of mine from Louise, you know, she says, the moment you've got something to talk about, you need to try and get some people together to talk about it. Um, and um, I'm so grateful that, that you guys uh, came to talk about it. So thank you very, very much. Um, so there's a problem. You know, uh, there's a problem in performance management. Um, and I think this is a great invitation to every single one of you to, to find a way to start innovating in this space. And you know, we talk about um, you know, everybody else is out there innovating and having ideation sessions and we're often facilitating those things or hiring people to go into those spaces. But here in the space that we're supposed to know something about is an old, old problem that hasn't gone away and and we're perpetuating it you know by participating in it we we perpetuating the problem without without maybe doing enough to challenge it so i think the first thing for all of us i'm hearing validation for me that i should try and innovate in this space but of course that invitation is to you guys you know to do that too richard may be right uh, when richard said it may be broken at its source it may be broken right at the beginning in terms of how we think about the relationships, you know, by what right do I performance manage anybody? <laughs> or by what right uh, is there such a, a, a control process? Or so, but if it is broken at source, if that's true, then it's then it breaks everything. It's it's broken along with active citizenry, it's broken along with um our relationship to government, to all institutions. It can't just be broken in our organizations. If it's broken at source, it's broken everywhere. Uh, and I, I, one of the things I want to do is go off and look at like the Nordic countries and see, because I, I suspect they have a different thing. They're not maybe quite the same. So what does performance management look like in Norway? I, I'm going to go and look, you know, I, maybe there's something there, but it would be quite a challenge if it's true, because it's quite hard to fix that break at source. So thank you for playing with me. I'm done talking. So Craig, just um, I just want to say that that book that you're reading, and Craig's not supposed to have a pre um, copy, but you know, we're friends. And, uh, but Peter Block, his latest book is called Confronting Our Freedom. And is it? I think it's Confronting Our Freedom. And uh, the book will be published on the 14th of February. And he has already said that he will, um, he's happy to be in a conversation with us. Craig, I think that's going to be you and me and, and Peter. Um, and everybody else will be invited to a conversation around freedom and accountability. And what does that mean for performance management? Because it's all part of the same conversation. Thank you, Craig. It was wonderful yeah, to listen to I you. can watch out for that book, everybody. I'm, I'm halfway through the, the draft and uh, it's shaking me. Thank you for having me, Liesl. You're welcome. I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, imagine, imagine where our thinking will be by February if we really are focusing in on this conversation and this topic already. Um, and that will be exciting. Um, so I'd like to see a, a show of hands of who would like to see a continuation of this conversation next month in about three, four weeks. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of hands. Okay. All right. So Craig, that's said then. Well, as long as everybody knows that then the conversations about innovations and experiments in the in the world of performance management, and I'm not going to be the one who's just wearing my kimono. You need to come along with what it is that you're trying or what you're seeing other mm. people you know, trying and, and let's have a conversation about maybe how do we make this crappy process better? Mm. Okay. I think there is a beyond performance management, Craig, in the same way that there was beyond budgeting and beyond payments. And that's why Paul Steen Company needs to be in this conversation as well. And yeah. it's like, if it's, if, if, you know, what are we actually, what were we trying to do with that process? It's a, it's a purpose conversation as well, because yeah, I think we've I'm lost sight of that. I'm spending six hours a day reading and researching in the space for the last, I don't know, month and a half. 
Um, there is a lot of cool stuff happening, but it does look like it's it's not paradigm changing. It's still within the paradigm. Anyway, bye. Bye. Thank, thank you so you much, so everybody. Much. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you.